Hello everyone! This is a brief introduction to the weather routing that I always do before leaving on long passages. Now I'm going to go check out our future on my uh, magical crystal ball. Now, I don't actually believe in magic, but I do believe in meteorology. And these days, the technology is available even to offshore sailors. For a very affordable $50, the SailGrab app gives me detailed forecasts for more than two weeks out that I can access without an internet connection. Now, you should take all of this advice with a grain of salt. I am not a meteorologist or a professional navigator. I'm just a guy who likes to do offshore passages who doesn't want to be at the mercy of weather routers or limited by the technology aboard the boats I choose to race and deliver. Don't discount SailGrib due to my lack of commitment though. SailGrib can connect with satellite devices and take you to the next level in navigation. Let's get started. First, you have to create a route to follow. In this case, the route is very simple, from Newport to Antigua. SailGrip will route you around land, though of course you wouldn't follow it blindly, you'd double check with other navigation tools, like your chart plotter. You long press on the screen where you want the route to start and then click on Manage Routes and then Create a New Route. You give the route a clever name with no spaces and tell it not to start at your current GPS position. SailGrip will then place a waypoint at the spot that you did the long press. Now pinch and swipe to navigate to the location where you want the next waypoint. Then you long press the screen again and select add waypoint to route and that will add the waypoint to the route. When you've constructed your entire route, press the done button in the lower left hand corner. You can see that this entire route is 1536 nautical miles on the run line. Next you need to get weather and current data downloaded. We'll download the current data first. Click the Group Request button on the right to get started. Then select your model. I chose Copernicus MET Oceanic Currents. Since this is a 1500 nautical mile trip, I want as many days as I can get. So I go to select days and then scroll down to the bottom and choose 16 days. You can see that the app turned my 16 days into seven days of current. I guess that's the limit of the days available for this model. In this case, that'll do just fine. In seven days, we ought to be through the Gulf Stream. Speaking of the Gulf Stream, it's not immediately apparent that the Gulf Stream is well represented in this view. But if you zoom in, things start to look more Gulf Streamier. <laughs> more than four knots of southerly flow? I'd be very surprised if these routings weren't taking advantage of that current. Now we get the weather and wind data. This is also grip data, so the procedure is the same as for the current data. Here I'll use the GFS 0.5 degree model. This time the app allows me to select the maximum 16 days, so off we go. For me, the point of a weather routing app is that the routing will approximate the boat's position as I look at the weather over time, so I don't have to try and keep track of it manually in my head. So I'll just jump right in without browsing the forecast. To create a routing, you select the routing button and then enter in a ton of parameters. I'm definitely not going to go over each one in this video. The most important parameter is the polars you want to use. Polars indicate the boat's performance in different wind angles and wind speeds. I often crew on a boat that performs very similar to a Swan 56, so I'll select that one. SailGrib defaults to using the grib file I just downloaded. I have to instruct the app to use the current file I just downloaded though. It's the most recently downloaded current file at the top. To start with, let's do a pure sailing routing without any motoring. Since this is a delivery, we'll come back to do a mixed routing later. Oops! <laughs> let's set the routing to start today and try again. Now SailGrib is calculating the routing. I can see the yellow current arrow on the routing line as it grows. SailGrib is using the Gulf Stream to get us south faster, as we had anticipated. Next we examine what's been calculated. I examine the routing proposed by SailGrib, making some adjustments to the input parameters and then routing again until I get something that seems like it's the right answer, or at least something that we can use as a starting point when we get underway. So let's look at some specific points in the routing. 9.6 knots and 16 true? Eh, that's possible. 13.8 knots? Huh? A Swan 56 is no planing boat. 
Ah, 3.9 knots of current directly behind us as we're crossing the Gulf Stream? Well, downwind into 20 knots of breeze, I'll believe 9.9 .9 knots through the water. 9 knots in 10 true, however, seems optimistic, as does 7.4 knots in 6 knots of true wind. I want to use less optimistic polars, and since this isn't a race, we can definitely allow for some motoring. First, let's update the routing to allow for some motoring. Per the first routing, we're not short of wind to get to the Caribbean, so we don't have to motor slowly to conserve diesel. We can sail when the boat is moving well. Let's set that threshold conservatively and call it 6 knots. We'll cruise at about 9 knots when covering long distances. This second routing has minimum motoring. It's quite similar to the first routing. Motoring does help us punch through one forecast wind hole. Let's keep the second routing as a lower bound on our passage and get rid of the pure sailing one. Now let's try some less aggressive polars. Because those boat speeds seem optimistic and we're counting on getting the wind shifts and gulf stream just right. Let's guess conservatively and go with a 15 foot shorter waterline length and rerun the routing. This might seem overly conservative to you, but let's think of it as an upper bound and see what we get. Alright, these boat speeds seem much more attainable for a delivery crew. 7.7 .7 speed through the water with 15 knots at 140 degrees? Okay. 8.4 knots through the water with 20 knots at 140 seems much more realistic than 9.9 .9 knots. Averaging 9.9 .9 knots broad reaching in 25 knots on a boat whose hull speed is 8.5 knots still seems overly optimistic in a 40 footer. In the 55 footer we're actually sailing however, this is a more realistic number. All in all, this upper bound seems like a pretty fast passage for a shorthanded delivery crew to aim for. We'd be sailing pretty hard to keep up with the routing using a 40 footer's polars in delivery mode especially the parts with the spinnaker up in 25 knots of wind while crossing the Gulf Stream. Just saying. Now let's look at how much time we're going to spend motoring. We don't want a routing that's going to run us out of diesel. The boat carries enough diesel to motor for three days straight. This routing has two days of motoring and the motoring doesn't start until we're at the halfway point. We can definitely work within this routing's fuel consumption plan. I'm satisfied with the Swan 40 routing where we motor when the boat speed drops below six knots. I leave port chasing that 7 day, 15 hour passage time, but not very optimistic about actually catching it. When you use theoretical polars included in SailGrib WR app, you're going to get some fast passage estimates. Let's look at some averages for the routings we created in this video. SailGrib predicted the Swan 56 could average 9 knots VMG with an average daily run of 216 nautical miles. The Swan 40 routing averages 7.7 .7 knots and daily runs of 186 nautical miles. If you allow motoring at 9 knots, you add 7 miles to your average daily run on the Swan 56 here. Only 7 miles. Now, I recently did a delivery from New York to Antigua aboard a Hylus 54, so I've got some pretty accurate data from an actual trip to add to the mix. Our average VMG was only 6.5 knots, which meant that the trip took us 10 days at an average of 156 miles per day. That's not very impressive given the expected routing times that Sailgroup WR was giving for smaller boats. On the 55 foot race boat I had in mind when I did these routings, we probably could have beaten 10 days, but matching 216 nautical miles per day would have been quite challenging. Our fastest offshore days on that 55 foot race boat were 220 nautical mile days so we'd have to be pushing pretty hard and have almost ideal conditions to match sail grib's estimates. On the Hylus we averaged 7 knots over ground, but because we didn't follow the rum line exactly, we wound up covering an extra 5% distance wise. Just be aware that all of these daily averages in this table were in VMG, not in miles over ground, which makes them that much tougher to match. Other than optimistic polars, there are more limitations to consider grip files do not contain any confidence data. They give you a wind speed, not a possible distribution of wind speeds. And as far as sail grip and grip files are concerned, 15 days from now forecast is just as reliable as tonight's forecast. You can really wind up on a flyer if you think you know exactly what the weather's going to be in 15 days. And you can run out of forecast data. We had 0.0, .0 knots of current after 7 days in our example routings. The model just didn't extend out that far. You can seriously go down the rabbit hole with all of these variations. 
you can vary so many parameters, I've listed the ones that I fiddle with the most. Still, these days I wouldn't leave on an offshore passage without running a bunch of routings using SailGrip. Once I find slow enough polars, the initial routings are very telling. Furthermore, routings partway through the passage using old forecast data have also proven helpful. Someday I'm sure I'll take the plunge and start getting satellite updates so I can stay on top of weather for long passages. If you've got a good source for conservative polars, I'd love to hear from you. And if you'd like to see more videos like this one, please give it a thumbs up. Also, feel free to leave a comment if you're looking for something specific. See you out there!